apologies there, some of you may have heard my phone go off, um, so I just had to take a quick break. These are the advantages of recording. We didn't have to hang around. Um, so before we move on, we've had, what have we done so far? Well, we've looked at the, um, the anatomy there and how um, patient positioning can affect how we view the anatomy. Um, and I'd, I'd like to talk just a little bit about a systematic approach uh, and what that means. So we've, we've talked about having an understanding of what is normal. Um, and then to, to kind of view abnormal, we want to be doing that the same way. We want to be viewing the x-ray in the same way every time. And it's one of the kind of key fundamental principles of image interpretation um, is having this systematic approach. So once you've appreciated normal and what that looks like, it's then reviewing each x-ray in the same way to ensure that you are looking at everything in a, in a standard kind of uh, in a standard way, much like the image acquisition needs to be done in a standard way. The interpretation of the, the subsequent image should be done in a systematic and standardized way so that we're looking at everything all the time and not missing things. So many people do this in different ways. Personally, when a check x-ray is in front of me, um, I, I tend to start with like a bit of a T. So I'll, I'll assess the top of the, the image. Um, so what we're looking at here, I'm looking at the soft tissues at the, at the top, um, making sure that there's no um, surgical emphysema. Sometimes you get that with a, if you've got a, a pneumothorax or if they've had any kind of surgical intervention, possibly, you know, have we got a, a central line in place? Um, and I'm just looking at the top of the, of the, the lungs to see if we have uh, any small pneumothorax and see any kind of pleural edge. And again, we're going to discuss some of these appearances uh, shortly, but we're just talking about a, a systematic approach now. And I tend to go down the mediastinum, and I once again view that the you know medial aspects of the clavicles are equidistant, and we've got a nice um, you know normal-looking uh, mediastinum. So it's, it's not widened. We've got nice regular um, paratracheal stripes. Um, looking at the the hilum and the the heart. And then I tend to go back to the top of, of the right lung, work our way down. We want to be making sure that you know, we're looking at normal parenchymal architecture. We've got coarse structures close to the hilum going finer and finer and finer as we go to the periphery of each lung. And that we're not seeing a, a distinct end of lung markings and then just black. It might indicate that we've got a, um, a pneumothorax. And we work our way down, looking at the dome of the right diaphragm from the cardiophrenic angle all the way down to the costophrenic angle or costophrenic recess two, two descriptions of the same thing and then do the same on the left make work all the way down look at the subdiaphragmatic region we need to assess to see if there's any free gas below the the diaphragm we can't do that on the left because we usually have a gastric bubble here but we shouldn't have any air in between the diaphragm and the, and the liver um, and we're going to talk about kind of the interposition of soft tissue structures um, in some further slides and once I've done that, I start again from the top and go down again. So we're looking at the, some of the soft tissues around the chest wall as well, and then looking at the bones, and then look at some of the, um, you know, the review areas, but some of the kind of trickier areas. Look behind the heart and by behind the heart. I don't mean turn the image over, um, but using modern pack systems, we can invert the image. Um, so white is black and black and white, and that can really make the kind of... Um, the area behind the heart um, stand out. I, I, it just does. <laughs> um, and then look at higher regions again. There's often some uh, uh, kind of things like the higher region, the, um, the behind the heart, and uh, these areas. Sometimes you can miss pathology, so we want to give them extra um, extra care and attention. And then I'll scan down the lungs again before coming to any conclusions. So I've made sure that I'm looking at everything in the same way, and then the trickier areas I'm looking at twice, if not thrice. So what am I looking at with the lungs? So they need to be black. That's a very basic description, except for the pulmonary vessels, which again, just let me find an unannotated chest X-ray. pulmonary vessels, like we said, coarser towards the higher regions, getting finer and finer and finer until we reach the periphery of the lungs where you'll almost see no individual lung markings. It just kind of gets a bit gray. 
Um, if for any reason we get extra areas of white or black in any of these regions, then we've spotted abnormal. Because we appreciate what normal is, all of a sudden that's abnormal, and then we can infer, okay, so it's it's black beyond that area of the lung. So if we had you know regular lung markings and then a distinct stop and just black beyond, well, we've got air where it shouldn't be because that's abnormal. So what can we infer from there? Well, air inside the thoracic cage is a pneumothorax. All of a sudden, we're looking down at the costophrenic angle. Instead of having a nice sulcus, we've got some white causing a meniscus or a line of fluid. We've got a pleural effusion because we know that fluid can show us white because it's not um, letting the x-rays pass through it. And it's where it shouldn't be because we should have lungs. We should have air in the lungs. So it's abnormal. We know what abnormal is and it's white. So we know what that is. So having all, so putting all of this together, we can have an understanding of what's in front of us. What's also really important is to think about the body left and right. So you know, with some exceptions, we are very symmetrical beings. So we want to be comparing left to right, including the periphery and all the way out to the edges. And like I said, the, you want to make sure that that hasn't been collimated off. Um, and, and if we do find examples where we're missing anatomy because of, you know, substandard technique, then that's empowering you to have the conversation with radiology that rather than just ring up going, oh, we need another one. You can tell them why you think you need a repeat, you know, because oh, we're looking for a pleural effusion and you've actually collimated off the. Postphrenic recess. We've just spoken about it briefly there. So, you know, what's the abnormality? Have we got too much white? Have we got too much black? Is something too big, too small? Is it in the wrong place? Um, and as we've seen previously, although abnormalities can represent pathology, um, anywhere from, you know, cortex of a rib all the way down to the mediastinum, we also need to ensure that we're not misinterpreting differences in technique as pathology, such as we've seen with, you know, kyphosis, lordosis, APPA. And what are we looking at with our cardiac outline? So as well as eyeballing, that looks small, that looks normal size, that looks too large. Uh, modern day PAC systems have um, calipers where we can um, assess the heart size in relation to the thorax and we look at the cardiothoracic ratio um, and the, the heart to be considered normal should be less or up to 50 percent of the uh, widest width of the chest um, so here we can see you know we've got a red line across the widest part of the heart to the widest part of the thoracic cage um, and here it says 39 percent so that's a normal sized heart and yes we could see that from the image but when you start to get close to 50 percent and, and slightly above then we can use the calipers on a um pa projection not an ap because we've got um you know artificial cardiac enlargement due to magnification um but then we can make an, an inference about part uh, cardiac enlargement um but going back to having that understanding of technique you can look at an ap image and go I can't make any assessment there because now we have the you know the, the, the knowledge and the, and the skills to uh, to understand what we're looking at we're going to move on shortly to look at kind of common pathologies um and and get some experience of looking at radiographs with common pathologies on but there's just another kind of radiographic principle that i think is really important for you to know about before we move on especially when it comes to um comes to the chest x-ray um and and that's the, what we call the silhouette sign. So as we said previously about the way that x-rays are attenuated by uh, the different structures of the body, when we get um, structures of a similar density next to each other, uh, we can obscure um, anatomy um, and make it difficult to interpret. Um, and as we said previously, the, the lobes of the lung lungs um the, the lungs are um subdivided into into lobes and we can use this principle of the silhouette sign to determine where an abnormality is within the lobes um so this will make more sense shortly hopefully um with some with some examples uh, this is uh, come from from the internet but um 
we can see or we can recognize a recognition of this sign is, is useful for localizing areas of airspace opacification or a telectus being a um, smaller area of lung collapse rather than an entire lobar collapse um, or where a mass is in relation to the lung um, because we lose um, kind of the normal silhouettes and, and contours of, of the chest. Um, so for example, if we are losing the right paratracheal stripe, then we know that the abnormality is in the right upper lobe. If we've lost the right heart border, we know that therefore it's in the right middle um, lobe or the medial aspect of the right lower lobe. Right hemidiaphragm, right lower lobe, the aortic knuckle, left upper lobe, left heart border would be the lingular segment of the left upper lobe uh, and the left hemidiaphragm, the lower lobe. And instantly that's probably not going to make much sense to um, a lot of people. We're going to look at some examples now and hopefully this will be more useful. Um, not the greatest x-ray. In fact, bear with me one second while I try and find a better example. So here we have some increased pacification in the right upper zone of the of the right hemithorax. But we have lost the kind of what we call the right paratracheal stripe. So here we can see that the mediastinum is white and we've got the apices of the left lung. But here we've got this big area of, of white and there's no real differentiation between the mediastinum and the upper part of the right lung. So we know here that that right upper lobe has, has collapsed down um, and we're not seeing those two structures separately because they're of a similar radiographic density. Similarly, and I believe there's a red, uh, so blue um, dotted line showing us where the abnormality is, but without that, we'd be able to see that the, you know, there's a loss of clarity of the right heart border. So our right middle lobe has collapsed down and it's adjacent to the right heart border. And then we would, we've lost the differentiation between the two structures. Um, slightly difficult to spot by the untrained eye, much, much more easy to see on the lateral chest projection, helpful because there's lots of orange arrows. Um, lower lobe, again, we've got the diaphragmatic dome and the two structures are of a similar radiographic density because we've got soft tissue structures against each other. Similarly, in the left lower lobe, similar white density to the diaphragmatic border. If we get a left upper lobe collapse, can we see when we talked about assessing one side of the body to the other, we've got a reasonably well uh, inspired right lung, but then we've got this hazy density across the left hemithorax. We've got some volume loss. So here the left upper lobe has collapsed down and what we're seeing is that kind of loss of volume because there's there's no air in the left upper lobe and it's a, it's got an increased density because there's no air in it. So we've got this hazy pacification on the left. So silhouette signs, uh, you know, slightly more advanced um, concept in image interpretation for the chest x-ray, but a useful thing to, to maybe do a bit more independent learning on.